This is for the nerds. This is for the brainiacs. This is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back. You ain't gonna touch me. You're not gonna do nothing. You are not above me. I bet you wish you was me. I know it. I know. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Only Friends Podcast. We're out here. This is the final episode of this week. It is myself, the tortoise, Conrad Simpson, trying to get it popping over there. Get it popping. Yeah. And we have Christian live from the tunnel that he's trying to execute to get out of Mexico. We do. <laughs> there he's, he is. It, it, Yo, I heard you guys talking that I got deported or some shit. That's the most racist thing I've ever heard you guys no. talk about. No, it was <laughs> it was it wasn't a race thing, man. It was uh Chin's DR Mamacita turned out to be an informant and uh we all heard about it. We sent Conrad down there to get you. You know, he's our hood lawyer. We thought you were in good hands, but now he's back with no updates. I don't know what the fuck you want. He's in a you fucking guys tunnel. You stop talking about these mamacitas, man. You guys are getting me in trouble every day. <laughs> He's in a nice no, it's, tunnel, though. It's the tr- hey, does yeah. that guy want to be on the podcast? Look, look that's definitely like, well, come on, man. Look, he's sharp, man. That is some great green screen technology right there. He has the video looping in the background mm-hmm. of, like, yeah, like of we, a guy walking by. Right, right. Yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, he's uh, mm-hmm. he's actually sitting behind, like, two guys with a shovel <laughs> trying to <laughs> El Chapo their way out of fucking Mexico. <laughs> We know what's going on, man. Your show, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, we're getting off to the spicy start. We we got a we got a big poker centric show today. A uh, lot of hands from the high stakes action yesterday. We're actually only going to show one in full, um, but there's a few that that we'll be able to reference and, and discuss. Um, big day yesterday for for both streams, albeit uh, bigger for one than the other. Um, Hustler popped off, man. Mm-hmm. They popped off yesterday. 16, 17,000 concurrent. Yeah. yeah. I think the stream ended up going for like nine and a half hours, ten and a half. That shit was lit. That is something that uh, I think they do a really great job of is knowing when they have an engaged audience and just keeping the cameras rolling. Mm-hmm. Like so many streams I play on are hard cuts at our X. Um, you know, Poker Go is a good example where they put together really great lineups and players often want to continue playing because... Some of us are fucking stuck. Yeah, it sucks. Because, like, if hour four, hour five, hour six, that's when the game starts getting good. People get stuck balls, and that's where the money starts fucking flying. Yeah. And um, for them, though, it's a heavy cost to keep the, the cameras rolling any longer. So they're always a hard stop at hour six, and almost certainly the game breaks. Like, the winners, once you give the winner a chance to walk, yeah. he walks. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, that's just the way it is. And it's just an just, excuse to, to book yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and you just don't have enough people who are buried. You know, it's always just me and one (laughs) other guy. (laughs) Like, hey, you guys want to keep this going? Get me even for my life, maybe? Usually that's what happens. No, it never keeps going. No, I thought you you always went off stream. On bike, we play off stream a lot. Right. um, Because Eric is an accommodating host Mm -hmm. and just is happy to order some wine and keep the game going for an hour and a half until I have to catch my flight. (laughs) Which is nice, because I do get unstuck sometimes, but... I mean that's sharp. You just lose a, like on on the stream, and then uh, and then you know make yeah, everyone's yeah, it's, money. Out. It's real fucking. But well, you're getting all those invites. Yeah, I get all the invites, and uh, <laughs> and all of my sessions are flat zero. But yep. you know we're doing the Lord's work out there. <laughs> really, really giving a lot of entertainment value to those watching. Uh, um, before we get into the shits though, with with some hand breakdowns, uh, I gotta tell you, my man Landon. He's out there. Where is he, he now? He is everywhere. Where man. the fuck is he now? Well, we're gonna we're gonna ask, where oh, is where, Landon where Tice? Is Landon? Wow, that is that's oh. our man right there. Oh <laughs> shit, Jose Cruz. Yep. <laughs> He's out there. And look at <laughs> Landon. He has a front row seat. I know. He took a picture. I of, can't uh, believe he went to the Pirates game. Wow. Yeah, he went to the Pirates game. He took a picture of O'Neill Cruz. Okay, okay. Help me buying some clothes. Stop the bed bath and beyond to get some new towels. Yeah, for, get a new towel. Some new threads. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, Ryan will be really stepping his game up if he takes like one of those brown towels off of the rack <laughs> and, and puts it around Landon's waist. Now we're now we're really getting into business. And honestly, like I know enough about Photoshop to know that that's not a big ask, and we will get that picture. <laughs> 
Oh, oh man. You got to love it. Ryan's Honestly, it's, work. it's one of my favorite bits that uh, has been born out of this. Landon is super annoyed by it, it which is, makes it so much better. Yeah. It's so great. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's. I mean, you post a great. towel picture, you just have you have to just take it, right? I mean, when you do that, you just... There's just some things you got to take. You know, it. something's going to come back. I know it's not going to get as viral as the Bernie meme. No. But with our little circle... It's That's more, what this has become. It's right, more viral yes. than the fucking bird right, yes. in our circle. Right. And, and, and Melissa hasn't even gotten started yet. It's true. No. Right. Like, she's been busy. Uh, she's not one to pass on a good <laughs> meme opportunity. I think Ryan put one with him and Bernie. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he did. I will say it's been a little overkill. Okay. Like, you know, uh, you, you don't have to tweet them all out. Uh, let's space this out a little bit. One per day, maybe take the weekend to get a real good collection together for next week. Uh, it's addicting, though. I can see. Yeah. I can see yeah how it well, can be because I interact with every one of them. But once you get to <laughs> picture number 100, Yo, like, I didn't even think about this. We're about to take this shit next level. We're going to hit up our boy. Get a sticker made of Landon? No, no, <laughs> no, no, because he's going to come back with gang signs on his neck for some <laughs> god unknown reason. I'll never for the life of me understand this. Yo, I can't wait to show fucking Berkey's sticker here. It's, we it's, don't have it here right now, so, but it is the best, most racist thing I've ever seen in my one, life. one of our former Academy members does like uh, t-shirts and, and stickers and, you know, I don't know to what degree he goes with printing and stuff. And he sent us a bunch of like just fun shit along the ways. But for uh, you, can't, you guys may be able to see Conrad's sticker is actually on the back of his computer. Uh, so that's the Connie. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a picture of Conrad. That's it. I have a tattoo across my neck, but it just looks different on you. <laughs> so this is the thing. He adds... He adds these like tiny little features, and I look like fucking Ed Norton <laughs> <laughs> from American History of X. Jesus, in, he does. in the picture that he uh. chose, like, not only did he choose this like hardened picture of me to begin with, but then he just puts like, like I have a face tat and like these neck tats, and they look racist as fuck. It's honestly the best thing I've ever seen in my life. The first time I saw it, I fucking lost it. <laughs> I was on the floor. <laughs> I, I was, was kind of. I was kind of upset. You literally I said I was getting deported. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, <laughs> you can't be just popping up out of nowhere like that, man. Bro, <laughs> Chin's DR Mamacita gave us the whole scoop, man. She told us what was going down. She said uh, that they found out about your legal birth certificate. That you're actually you're younger than you claim you are, <laughs> and you got to get your ass back to the DR and pay some taxes on that fucking house you bought. That's what they said, man. I'm just, I'm just reporting the news. That's all. That's all I'm here to do. Hey, I'll send you a diamond shovel, though. We're gonna get you out, buddy. Conrad, Conrad, let me in. You know, he's not free due to the lawyer-client confidentiality. He's not free to talk about it on air. Can't talk about everything. Nope. Uh, but you know, he he said we're gonna get popping chin. It's it's all good, man. You'll be right, man. All good. Six to twelve months. <laughs> oh man. I appreciate everyone being able to roll with the jokes. Must be Friday. <laughs> Must be Friday. Must be Friday. What else we got? I think there was... Is that, is that it for, for assets? For intros? Twitter's popping off. Twitter's going wild. Twitter's going wild. Uh, I, I don't want to dive too much into, uh, into the stupid argument that Nick and I are having. I mean, it's yeah, so yeah. fucking great, honestly. Like, I, I enjoy no, every I, moment I, of it. I do. Uh, honestly, I would rather just, I would rather just like have him on and talk about it because he's purposefully being an asshole. You really? Yeah, I was gonna say you can't do that because then he's just gonna move the goalpost as far as you can. If well, you in a room just... of seven, I would hope that we won't let him do that. <laughs> It's so hard. He manipulates the conversation so That's, well. Are you fucking kidding me? You're actually right. I'm doing a really good job right now, one on one on Twitter, yeah. of just like <laughs> calling out his bullshit antics. And, uh, you know, people who are observing are kind of just like, yeah, like, you know, you're, you're creating a straw man. But in a room of six, he's persuasive and charismatic enough that I think he'll win you guys over instead of me. Having you guys have my back. He manipulates the conversation so well. I, I don't know. You guys will all just be we, like, we yeah, what, what about that thing <laughs> that has nothing to do with this conversation? I'll we be might like, just fuck around it. and drink the juice, man. 
<laughs> Next thing I know, you guys all have a two liter jug of piss. <laughs> you guys are ready to head up to Mount Charleston for a weekend getaway, <laughs> licking frogs and doing ayahuasca, drinking your own pee. Uh, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, man. Uh, <laughs> Wait, does that get me to 5K a month? It will. It will. That's 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 the uh, initiation fee. Um, I do actually think it's a very I think it's a very necessary conversation to have, and I think it's a very interesting one that doesn't have a clear-cut answer. Forever, I've admired Nick's work, and uh, I think like his ability to lean into data and uh, derive winning strategies kind of ahead of the curve the way he has has been remarkably impressive. But I also very much believe that uh, it, it's a very gray line in more morality like i don't think and a lot of sites made this illegal in the past but you know it's basically become big business where very cheaply you can buy databases of hands and this happened uh recently i think it was the the kanu course uh that got put out on upswing he did a bonus course on how to beat o, uh, otb red baron mm. and it was just like a dissection of a hundred thousand hands or a few hundred thousand hands of like otb's play and it's just like man that's shitty that's like you know, when the player has no ability to protect his own frequencies through, uh, through the privileged information that poker offers, right? Like that's the big nuance that's being glossed over here is poker is an imperfect game or is, is, it's a game of imperfect information. And in order to acquire that information, it's very privileged to those who pay. And those who pay are those in the pool that are competing against this human being, right? Mm -hmm. So like if you're running a HUD versus me in a game, that's fair play. We all know that that's a part of the rules and like you're privileged to that information because you're paying rake alongside me. You are contributing to my win rate or taking away from it, you know, yeah. depending on like where we rank, whatever. I think that's all uh, completely reasonable and fair across the board. I think it becomes very dubious whenever somebody who's not in the player pool at all can then go out and get mass data analysis on like my specific play mm -hmm. and just tear me apart. It's like, why would I ever want to play online? Why would I ever want to rise to the ranks online if I could just go play live where they'd never have access to do this. Right. Yeah. Right. And the whole argument that I was making is that uh, he was paralleling it to chess. And I'm basically saying, like, if we're talking observational data, there's no real argument to make here. You can garner a lot of information from watching a chess match. And you can garner even more from watching 100 chess matches with the same player. Right. Like the information is perfect. There's nothing to decipher. There's no noise. It's all signal. So when a move is made, that is uh, just a clear-cut, definitive thing that happened, and you can run it through an engine and figure out like you know what the EV of that is, so to speak, right? The same is not true in poker because everything's mixed frequencies. Everything is happening uh, relative to the exploitative spectrum of how humans uh, operate. Right? Because nobody is playing anywhere remotely close to perfect. So now all we can do is compare it to uh, a game theory optimal abstraction. And that's not the same thing. Right, There is no one line to victory in, in poker. The equilibrium is formed based around the uh, parameters or the quote-unquote agreed-upon parameters. Right, mm -hmm. And there are parameters for every street. So when a person bets 25% on the turn, we don't know if his sole strategy was B25 if B25 was a part of a two-sizing two strategy, if uh, he's range betting here, if B25 is a part of a six-sizing strategy, mixing <laughs> checks as well, like all of this alters yeah. the equilibrium. And observationally, I can never assert what's happening because only one option was ever chosen. Mm. And even if it's a, an option that only gets chosen 1% of the time, I don't know if you rolled for that or not. I'll never know. So my observation is insanely skewed and biased. Where in chess, it's just not. There's very little noise. There's no variance. You know, there's no uh, something different is going to happen on this river versus that river type there's of thing. It's always a perfect move. Right. So, so when, you, when you data scrape and you take this guy's, uh, you know, 100, 200, 300,000 hands, then, and you run it through the, uh, the engine, then you can, you, can, you can see, okay, he is at this frequency. You'll have enough... You'll have enough uh, You'll have enough, like uh, enough of, of a, a sample. sample. Yes. Yeah, right. And these people are purchasing millions of hands. Right. Like if you're just person. watching it and he and he B25s on the turn, you're like, I, I have no idea what that means. But right. then you run it through a hundred thousand hands, and you're like, okay, he's doing it at this frequency. Now I know that. It's now very I can easy to see that he 
over probes on mm -hmm. these board texture under probes yeah. this is what the this is what the training for Lamana or uh sorry Lamana yeah. yeah. imagine uh, <laughs> for Landon. this is what the training for Landon's heads up match was like for mm -hmm. Perkins and when I kind of got a glimpse of that I was just like oh man this this hurts me right because like they weren't training they weren't training overall heads up strategy they were way past that already uh they were into the nuance of like okay, well, what we've seen so far through X amount of hands is that his turn probe, turn probe frequency is off by X percent, and we can exploit by... Landon's do, training or... Bill, or Bill's I assume training. both, but this is what was happening on Landon's side. Gotcha. Right, so it's like his turn probe frequency is off by X percent. He's too passive this way or he's too aggressive this way. Our counter strategy will be then this, and then you have to develop like all the, the, the blooming effect that comes off of that, right? So it becomes really complex and very nuanced and very... Um, difficult to nail down precision, but that's the whole challenge. The whole game there is nailing down precision. Chin, you got something? Yo, I'm just trying to think if you were thinking about all this in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> first, yo, first of all, he said 2018. Uh, all right. Uh, he, what Christian's referencing is uh, somebody asked why I'm not on Hustler Live this week, and I said I don't think that these are lineups that guys like me get invites to. Uh, and Feldman replied, 2018 Berkey would have gotten an invite to this. <laughs> I said, I'm flattered that you think my strategy has changed that much in four years, but aside from not opening 5X, I promise you very, very little <laughs> has, has altered. Um, but yeah, I mean, like that's, that's just, again, that's a perfect example of how observational data skews things, right? <laughs> 2018, I was losing most of my sessions on streams. And 2018, uh, a lot of the stuff that I was doing then was not theoretically approved yet, right? Fast forward to now 2022. Oh, look, overbetting 2x pot's a thing. Oh, look, big sizes are a thing. So it's like very little changed in my strategy, but a lot of the stuff that I was doing just became more of a quote unquote thing. And yeah, my, my precision for executing it maybe uh, developed uh, a little bit wider, but that was always the case. It's not like I just became a thinking player. Right, like the only difference is now the audience or the the people, the powers that be, are a little bit more aware of the fact that like I actually had a reason behind doing what looked like fuck shit. Yeah, it's the same thing with Keating. It's like, and and that's not even to say that it's a dangerous thing to the players in the game. Like, if Keating told you that he has an absolute reason for everything that he does, is he gonna have a seat tomorrow? Of course. Yeah. Fucking of course. Yeah. How could he not? Right, of course. Because no matter what, what he does still generates action. It's the same thing with G-Man. Mm -hmm. Like, we know Garrett's a good thinking player. But he still does all the right things to make the game good. So it's just like, I don't know. I think the whole, like, image nonsense is uh, pretty, pretty ridiculous. But um, that's, that's kind of neither here nor there. It does, it does uh, solidify the, the debate that I'm having with Nick, though. Where um, basically I was trying to distill it down to game footage, right? If I can watch 100 hours of Magnus Carlsen play chess and I can start to glean some understanding of things that he does, uh, then I don't feel like that's unethical because that's just me putting in the work of watching game tape and, and learning something, right? If I go watch that same 100 hours of Nick Howard playing poker, I learn minimal. Hmm. I, I pick up on some tendencies, right? But I'll never be able to scrutinize it down to the level of precision that I could if I got those same 100 hours of footage broken down into a database. Yeah, it's basically like, yeah, you can watch 100 hours of Magnus, but you can't watch every chess match that's ever happened in the history of the world, which right. is similar to right. what and, that would and, be. And to be fair, I said that if, if what we're actually debating is the use of mass data in both realms, then I think in both realms, uniformly, it's unethical. Mm -hmm. Like if there, are, if there are databases in chess that have logged every move ever played on chess.com, then I'm also of the side that that's probably not great. Yeah. Um, at least not for the players. It might be great for the overall game in the sense that maybe it'll evolve or maybe it'll become more solvable, which for whatever reason we as humans aspire to, like we can't have nice things. <laughs> we, we, fucking ruin we, we create these things that are like enamor us and create like, you know, in, in the gambling sense, uh, maybe less so chess, more so poker, uh, a century worth of, uh, a kind of like mano y mano machismo type of uh, of game where it's just a battle of wits and then at some point we're just like this isn't good enough for us I want answers <laughs> I'm gonna fucking break this game that's what I want to do yeah um, 
but yeah, I, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't want to belabor the point too much more because Nick's not here to defend himself, and I actually do think he has some very reasonable uh, points to articulate on on this matter when he's not just trying to gotcha me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm shocked. He loves it. <laughs> Honestly, I guess I shouldn't be shocked because I've argued with him enough to know that this isn't shocking to me. But uh, I figured with as active as he's been on Twitter lately, and as much as I've experienced Twitter hell in the, in the recent six months or so, he would just know that like, I'm way too equipped for this nonsense. Like stop fucking moving the goalposts to stop fucking creating straw man arguments. And let's just get down to the nuts and bolts of, is it moral to scrape data on your opponents? I kind of think he's just been fishing for an answer from you. An answer on what? Everything, you know, all his tweets, you just haven't responded to them. And he was just looking for someone no, to argue with. To Oh, you mean all of the, yeah, all all the engagement seeking <laughs> yes. tweets lately? That's what, maybe that's what he was doing. He's engagement just, seeking with you. Yeah, right. I think he's just, you know, he's seeking you out. God, mm -hmm. I fell for it again, you man. Did. <laughs> Jeez. Nick Howard's now on everybody's timeline because he leveraged my platform. Mm -hmm. Fuck me. <laughs> you win this round, Howard. You win this round. He's like, Ma. Uh, <laughs> Man, uh, what a meta level to that, that would, would be, be right? Amazing. Yeah, like I'm sitting here calling him out for using like uh, for using like poor poor context, whatever, trying to have a debate, and all he's actually thinking is like, "That's if, right." Yep. Click if, the keys, keyboard monkey. If there's anybody would think on that level, it would be Nick. Oh, 100 yeah, percent. He's a he's a fucking mad scientist yeah. for sure. All right, did you guys watch the streams yesterday? Yo, I have do your homework. I've been watching a lot of poker recently. I watched every hand that you posted in Discord. Okay, so Brian saw four hands. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, man, I had I had fantasy drafts. I had things going on, man. Oh, fantasy drafts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. You know, good chin. Bro, <laughs> Alan Keating is the most interesting man in poker, bro. <laughs> you keep saying this. No, he does, is. But I, I, when he's on. I have to watch because I don't know what's going to happen. He never folds. Okay, so this is this is a good place to start. Uh, did you watch yesterday's show at all? Like, did you see our conversation at all? Jen. Jen. Christian. Christian Soto. Of course, of course I watched yesterday's show. I watched every minute of this entire week. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, we were talking about the podcast, not... Yeah, we were yeah. talking about the podcast, not but, high you know, we know you're good to know that poker. you're a big high-stakes poker junkie. We know. <laughs> like, we, we know you didn't miss anything. We get it, bro. Oh, the podcast? Yeah, yeah. I watched a couple minutes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, uh, fucking prick, man. We appreciate fucking you. Hopefully asshole. you gave a, 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 a thumbs up and a like. I bet you didn't thumbs up it. No. No like. Everybody should do that right now. Like, he's looking at it. <laughs> Okay, okay, so <laughs> where this segues is, is we kind of have uh, a bit of a, a needle mover, let's call it, right? So today is the day we kind of get to test how important certain things are to the market. Now, let's be clear. Hustler is going to get the most views. That's not a debate, right? The question is, will some of that viewership now shift to the bike because Garrett's over there, Pearson's over there, uh, and they're running a one, two, four possibly game. Um, I mean, this is all cute that they're trying to pit this whole, uh, Pearson Helmu thing. And I'm sure that there will be some moments that are funny, but let's, let's be honest. What we're really looking for is a little bit of blood between two guys that are going to sit a half a million deep. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, so, so does Garrett and Eric casino, Eric being on live at the bike today, move the needle enough to where they're not getting i mean yesterday it was sixteen thousand viewers on hustler Congruent, versus right? 400 on yeah. live the bike that's it was wild yeah i would put my predictions that yes they're going to get some more of the views maybe get it up to like four thousand concurrent five thousand but that's that's huge, huge that, but that's man. also because of Juman, like garrett but that's right. that that to me proves the 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 experiment right that's that's the test if you 10x your audience I don't care if you're still getting, I don't care if you're still so getting here, ratio. Here's hard. the thing. Here's the thing. I can guarantee you live of the bike's going to be fucking muted. And um, it's just going to be like other people watching Hustler as well. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm just saying that it doesn't matter if you're being ratioed. That's, that's not the question, right? The question is, does Garrett move the needle enough to increase live of the bike's viewership by a significant margin? And if it does 10x, if it goes up to 4,000 viewers versus 400 that's fucking significant 
Yeah, it is. Right? That's, that's a clear indicator that this man is a linchpin to getting views. Yeah, I also mm-hmm. don't think, like, the hustle will be down from 16, though. I didn't say that they would. I, it's not a matter of... Yeah, uh, of um, my point is they're not going to pull audience. Agree. Well, that's not the way it works. It's not television. You're not fixed to one channel, right? Yeah. So that's, it's not about that. Bike got crushed yesterday because their lineup was a nothing burger. Yeah. Right? Like, Helmuth, again, is sitting with fucking 30 big blinds. <laughs> while well, well, ch- well, ch- Chance, is, yeah. Chance is talking about how he's going to run him over. It's like, bro, it's, it's tough to run over he, he a had, limp shove stack. He had 200 at one point. Did he? I think he had 10,000 from him. That's 100. They were playing 51. Oh, they were. I'm sorry. I thought, uh, I thought it was 25, and 50. honestly, they might have been playing 51-2 or just 1-2 mm-hmm. straight. Yeah. They literally might be playing makes, one two straight because there was a hand. That makes much more This sense. is the only hand that I'm going to mention from Live at the Bike because they don't clip anything out and I don't have any anything to pull. So it was the only memorable hand. And it's not even that big of one. But Helmuth limps under the gun. Uh, Eric um, Hicks limps under the gun one. My man Renee from Storage Wars makes oh, it. Oh, <laughs> that's where he's from. Yeah. He, he makes it a solid 1K at 100, 200, or 51, 2, whatever. So it goes 200, 200. He makes it 1K. I'll leave his hand a mystery for the moment. Okay. Comes back to Helmuth, who has jacks. He obviously limped with a purpose. Smooth call. <laughs> <laughs> How deep is it? 10K. 50 big blinds. Nice. He's, he's setting the trap. He limped with a purpose, Conrad. Okay. He's going to commit 10% of his chips I mean, here with He's trying to jacks. save his tournament life. Yeah. yeah sure. He wants to see a safe flop. <laughs> He wants to see a safe flop. He lets Eric get in there behind him with the ace five suited. Okay. And we see we see three. Ace king queen, two diamonds. Good. <laughs> so did not get the safe flop. Checks. Eric checks. My man Renee comes out banging for twenty five hundred into the three K. Okay. Bold call. Check, 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 check. My man Renee. Eight deuce of hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why mm. fucking Phil was actually trapping him. It just comes no. out eight five three sometimes. No, I'm not going to accept that. <laughs> so what you're saying is he Phil is ahead flop. of his range, uh, slightly. Well, he, that's because he's. Look, no, I'm not even saying this to make fun of Renee. Scared of the guy behind him. No, I know no, you're not making fun of Renee. No, listen, I'm no, telling you not. why, man. If you no. want to know the reason, <laughs> he's scared of he's scared of flops. He's scared of turns. He's scared of rivers. Mm-hmm. Look, uh, he's scared to play poker. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm actually not even. Uh, I'm going to take this the whole other direction. I'm not only am I not making fun of Renee. I'm patting him on the back for taking the eight do suited and saying fuck you. Yeah, because here's like the that. thing: Helmuth Fumble. limps under the gun, and he takes one of the bottom. 5% of hands in the deck and says, <laughs> you suck so bad. Stinks. Sorry, you stink so bad True. that job, I know you're going to make a mistake right here, right now, and it's going to lead to future mistakes. And you know what it would have led to had Eric, had, had Eric Hicks not been in the hand? A fucking... Him fucking winning with 8 high on mm-hmm. Ace, King, Queen versus yeah. Jax. And like you can say, oh, that's a one-off scenario. He had Jackson. Three overs fell. That's pretty rare. That's going to remember, remember, remember. Yeah, he, 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 had, he put 10% of his chips in the middle, man. <laughs> With a good fucking hand. What are you limping for if that's the play? Look, this guy. You see, the problem is you don't realize that there's no good way to play jacks, though. You're right. Dude, so, jacks are hard. Like, jacks play. are really hard to play. They you know? hard. You're right. There's three jacks. ways to no, play them. Right. There's no good way to play them. Like, Conrad, you're right. I know, man. You're, he, no he, matter what he would have done, I would be making fun of him right now for he's it. He's 100% you're right. one of those guys who looks down at jacks and is like, oh, I hate jacks. Yeah, God damn it. Go ahead, Christian. Uh-huh. I like that it beeps whenever you have yeah. He's here to defend Helmuth. Yeah, Go he's ahead. coming. Go ahead. Jen? Jen? Are you talking? No, whatever. Uh, nope. There's some noise in the tunnel. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> there's, the, there's the loop. There's, there's the, the background loop. The man wins 25 of 28 live streams, and you're here talking shit. Here we go. <laughs> here we fucking go. But is he even up, bro? <laughs> is he even up? 25 of 28 live streams, but like, you know... When he lost the buy-in on the other three, did that neutralize those 25 wins? <laughs> I mean, that might be positive. No, I feel he, like he smashed. He might be down two buy-ins. I feel like he smashed mm-hmm. one of those. He yeah, yeah, yeah. Those. He probably won like a buy-in and a half. <laughs> Chance, Chance uh, got interviewed before the stream, and they asked him, you know, what his plan for the day was or whatever, like how, how it felt to play with Helmy. He's Melissa like, interviewed him. Yeah, Melissa interviewed him. Shout out to Melissa. Uh, my apologies. We should have had this clip ready. Uh, I screwed the pooch in pre-production, but uh, she asked him like, you know, 
what, what's your expectation today? And Chance is like, I'm going to run him over. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I replied to the tweet and I said, where are you going to spend that 1900? <laughs> <laughs> he got that 1900. Mm-hmm. He did. He smashed the game. Yeah, he, he chance as he should. Cleaned up. Yes. Cleaned up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yo, there was a moment where fucking Phil was pissed off. At, um, Eric's talking shit, and Phil goes, "I'm gonna beat you for the rest of your life." And Chance just goes, "Wait, wait, Phil, can I have an invite back too?" <laughs> 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 I was dying. <laughs> My goodness, man. Um, speaking of smashing it, Young Wesley. Yo, he just does it. <sighs> Buys it for the men. Just fucking. He did buy in super short yesterday. I forgot about that. Yep. I um, only need to watch his forehands to know how he did. Bro, Wesley. <laughs> Wesley's so sharp, man. Like, it's so funny that uh, Feldman goes, oh, 2018 Berkey would have got invited to this game. Yeah. If you don't think Wesley's sharp as fuck, you are not paying attention. Super sharp. Guy buys in Min in one of the deepest, most spewious games alive where there's no greater EV available to you than being the short stack yep. and just being able to be all in, fading coolers for hundreds and hundreds of big blinds while Keating is V-pipping 90%. <laughs> <laughs> and he did this the last time too. Uh, I don't know if you guys recall, but he came in and tried to buy him for 20K and they forced him to buy him for 40, right? Like this is a guy who happily buys in for hundreds of thousands in other lineups that he thinks he's a bigger favorite in, yeah. or lower. It's not, I don't even think it's that he doesn't think he's the biggest biggest favorite. Well, lower think, lower variance. Yes, and yeah, because a lot of people are gambling. He wants to gamble kind of a little bit with them. It's it's very counterintuitive uh, to what people tend to believe. But the more splashy the game, the more shallow you want to be. Yes, your decisions are simpler. Uh, you're taking on the variance anyway. And you don't want to be playing thousand big blind pots with one pair. Yeah, it's very You're, easy to get in fucking sixty big blinds. It's easy to get in two hundred big yeah. blinds, right? So it's like uh, yesterday they were playing one two four. If you're sitting with fifty thousand, that goes in so smooth with one pair. Nothing. Like you can get Jackson pre so fucking easy and well, be miles ahead. Me. What about if you have ten k? <laughs> if you have like a hundred big blinds. At what? Can, if you have a hundred big blinds, is it easy to get Jackson <laughs> after you limp under the gun? Oh yeah. Well, he, he didn't have 100. Oh, yeah. He had 50. Probably he even stinks. easier. <laughs> he stinks as bad as your callback stinks. I fucking hate the word. I can't even do it. <laughs> no I wonder you hate it. it. You stink at it. I hate it. <laughs> you're, you're just terrible. Uh, but Wes is... I mean, look, uh, it's so abundantly clear. If anybody watched the previous stream with uh, Aaron Zhang on it, like Aaron's sharp as fuck. Like this is a guy that a man in his 40s, I would happily seek out the tutelage for Eric Zhang. Like, bro, if you want to mentor me, I'm fucking in because I'm so sure you have all the money. I'm so positive that he is just (laughs) giga fucking rich. And I don't know how he got it, and I don't care how he got it. I'm just confident he knew what he was doing every step of the way, and he could replicate it if he went broke tomorrow. And that's the kind of guy that I want to learn from. Mm-hmm. That's who Wesley's learning from. Go ahead, Jim. That's all I thought when I met you. I <laughs> you got it wrong, man. I got all the morals, not all the money. <laughs> Fucked up. You, you, you done messed up. That's why Jim went dark, though. Yeah. <laughs> The chin learned. He's like, fuck this yeah, shit. Yeah, like four years in, he's like, God damn it. I'm becoming a good person and I'm yeah. poor as fuck. This is fucking miserable. I need to put this hood up and go dark side. <laughs> Yo, that is right. He's just like, see you, boys. Now he's in a tunnel. Now he's in a fucking tunnel with El Chapo. <laughs> just working out some, some fucking deals. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he wears that plantar shirt. Uh, that palantar shirt is a fucking front. Mm-hmm. That's not what he's invested in. <laughs> He's invested, he's invested in accumulating databases, but not, not the kind of databases we're talking about. <laughs> he's got digits, baby. Yeah, that could so be a green screen in the fucking tunnel. 100%. With the guy man. just walking past. Yo, that, guy's, <laughs> that guy's on a fucking loop. Mm-hmm. He keeps making the same path. It's, just, <laughs> it's like those aquarium green screens, yep. you know, where the fish just keeps darting back and forth. Yeah. Like, it's not even a good one, man. Come on, you pay up. Bro, get the fuck out of here, man. Uh. Yo, Chin's gonna be. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> For real though, Conrad sent this. Uh, Conrad sent one of these only jumper uh, podcasts over today. Uh, <laughs> this this dude Sharp, he he hosts the show, and uh, he was grilling this dude talking about the game. You know, like he's a, he, he's a pimp or, or whatever the case may be. Ism. 
Huh? It's called the ism. The ism? The ism. Go on. Tell me what that means. The game. You know, we call it the ism. Well, why? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, pimp ism. All right, all right. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, uh, this guy's talking about the game and uh, they were talking OnlyFans and he was kind of shitting all over it because this guy was trying to be like an only, this his guest was like an OnlyFans pimp. I, I can see Chin out there. He got a whole database of girls like working in front of the cam. <laughs> <laughs> this, ain't, this, this ain't a tunnel. I just figured it out. <laughs> this ain't the only friend's house. This is the only fan's house. <laughs> Bro, he's got nine bedrooms up there with webcams set up all over the place. Talking yeah. distribution, baby. I got that distribution. He's just going to go click, log right <laughs> off. <laughs> Where do you think that sales pitch came from uh, the other day? Yeah. Whatever he's like, you don't have a business without distribution, you yeah. know? Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what he's here for. <laughs> All right, so... That we're... clip was fucking hilarious. It was funny. Uh, uh, that, that show is actually very funny in a, in a big way, but um, not because it's meaningful in any way, shape, or form. It's just raw entertainment. Uh, but yeah, anyway, getting to Wesley, I think he won just north of half a million yesterday. Biggest win all time in, uh, in Hustler history. I could, that could be wrong. I turned it off with like 45 minutes to go. So I don't know if anything I, happened. I saw he had like 685, I think. Okay. In for 50? Um, maybe 100? Yeah, I'm not sure. Honestly. Yeah, maybe 100. Um, pretty, oh. So pretty confident that uh, he, he booked the biggest win in Hustler <laughs> history. They went to max overtime yesterday. I think it was supposed to end at 10, maybe? Yo, I'm curious if they had a fuck up with the cards. Why? When Wesley folded King Jack. What was the action? It, it was like... I remember you typing in the text and I was only, I was paying like half attention. Yeah, it was fucking... It got to a river where it was just like king high flop, jack turn, and ten river or something like that. And fucking... I don't remember the action because I really wasn't watching. But Keating bets river for like 40k or something like that. And oh. he just folds top two. And fucking Mickey's behind with top two as well. Oh, wow. And call. So I kind of figured that something was wrong with the cards mm, there. Because, possible. Like, he tanked for a while, and there was something wrong earlier in the stream, I believe, with the king. Or okay. it could have been wrong. So I was like, I think there's something wrong with that king in the deck. I don't know. It maybe. Could, it, was a, it would seem pretty wild. I mean, maybe. Maybe he's just on that next level shit. Thought yeah. that Keating had the queen nine. I mean. God, Jen. They're getting a new table. Uh because the card reader has been messing up for like a couple of weeks. So I, I think the new table is coming in. So it's probably that the cards got messed up. Yeah. yeah Nick hit me up. Uh, <laughs> actually, Nick, we should talk. Uh, he hit me up in DMs and asked if he could send a deck out for us to test. Uh, it just never actually happened. But um, we should have a discussion because there's, there's some new technology out uh, that I've been speaking with the creators of that uh, is significantly better uh than the current one the poker gfx uh it eliminates the action tracker altogether it does it automatically it has rfid chips i think it might pose a problem for casinos because uh the like you would have to bring foreign chips in basically yeah. I, I, but I, you I, can treat it like a tournament set yeah, i'm trying to figure out how that would actually work like eliminating the action tracker altogether because of the chips the yeah, chips how the do you how do you check um, <laughs> right? How do you check? How do you? Well, it it, it how just do you reload. Yeah, we just go by next action, right? Yeah, it just goes by next action. If the turn card comes out, then it auto checks everybody. If uh, a bet comes out, then it auto checks everybody prior. The whole table basically can read it. I'm assuming, like, so if someone correct. bets, it just knows that the person behind the first correct. act checked. Like correct. the table has to be like a mat of like GFX stuff. Like yes, there's mm -hmm. like two major large readers, mm -hmm. okay. uh, and it can handle stacks of. 50, I think, in chips and can still read them all. Okay. 50 high? Yeah. That's impressive. 50 or 40, I can't recall, but uh, very high, able to read them all. Um, they're currently uh, testing in Texas, I believe. I don't want to mm -hmm. give too much information because I don't know how much of this is right, yeah, yeah. privy, yeah. but um, I'm, I'm very interested in the technology. I think it's uh, a real improvement from what has been industry standard for a long time, um, especially because there's a huge opportunity to, for increased security. Uh, so I think that the biggest thing outside of just running a cleaner show and having less moving parts that can fuck up, mm -hmm. um, also having a faster response time and, and things of that nature, uh, the biggest upside is just being able to run 
a much, much, much more secure stream without actually having to create a uh, home developed. I don't want to say home developed. That sounds like we're creating meth in a basement. <laughs> <laughs> First a, of all, meth's not creating a basement. It's creating an RV. Uh, yo, I mean, <laughs> why why is it always got to be RVs, man? You know, Breaking Bad. There there are some. <laughs> it stinks, man. There's some poor. <laughs> Let me tell you, there are some poor ass rural towns that are meth havens and they are ap well, well, happily that, leasing because, out their basements. Well, no, because the house is the RV. Nah. <laughs> Titusville, they're all doing it in basements. Titus, Titusville? Titusville, PA. Oh, okay. Not Titusville, Florida. Don't get it confused. Uh, <laughs> Titusville, PA was like the meth capital for a minute. Uh, it's also where Drake's Well lives. Uh, who? Drake's Well. It's the first oil well in. United mm -hmm. States. A little, little history there for little you. A little history oh, lesson for you. Great. Yeah. So there's meth in a fucking oil refinery there. Well, I mean, you know, we're not really still pulling <laughs> oil out of Titusville, PA, Conrad. I don't know that it's all that active. You know, it's a yeah. bit of an old, old well, if you will. I've been there a time or two. Shot a slingshot at a bird or two up in old Drake's well. You know? <laughs> slingshot at a bird? Yeah, it's near... Uh, I have a camp in Ty Tynesta, Pennsylvania. Go so ahead, go ahead, go ahead Jim. <laughs> Fucking go ahead. Go ahead. This is the whitest shit I ever heard. <laughs> Why's well, all gonna be about race, man? <laughs> I slingshotted a bird in Titus. I didn't hit the bird. <laughs> no, I'm just uh, saying. There was a bird in a tree. I thought, like, let's scare it a little. All right. It wasn't like that pigeon last week. That, that, that fucking Gatsby. It wasn't Gatsby's fault. It was he the fucking, pigeon's fault. He licked my face, and I was like, oh, no. This feels like pigeon blood. <laughs> it was literally right after you said the story. <laughs> I mean, you know, dog's mouths are clean. Uh, moving off of Wesley. Uh, actually, let's not move off Wesley. Let's, let's cut to uh, one of the bigger hands that was played last night. Uh, bit of a cooler oh, he's spot. Gonna, yeah, he got a limp re-raise. No, this Wesley's is not the cooler spot. Wesley's up to something. I thought it was a little interesting. Next hand. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, this is the core spot. So a limp, re-raise, bluff, and JRB is just in there. That wine is flowing. He's going to call a jack-10 off. Two pot-sized bets left. And JRB has hit a 10, but Wesley has an ace. Ace-10-3. Check, check. And JRB turns jacks up. And I assume now it's time to go for some value. I do crab maga. Crab maga. Could be going from rags to riches from broke. Let's see. Forty thousand. Thinking that maybe Wesley is never gonna fold an ace. You know, if Wesley calls, the pot's gonna be one fifty. Jeremy's got half pot size bet left. Somebody hit him in back of the head. And Wesley calls. I was thinking, I was wondering if it was maybe all in or full, but it's not quite. Yeah, let's see if Jeremy sees a clean river. River is a seven, and he goes back to broke. Oh boy, and he might even value own himself all in here. Like, that has got to be the worst everything. card in the deck because he can't even see it. I believe Wesley's checked here. I mean, you can't fault JRB for trying to value bet here. Of course, the problem is if he's wrong and he doesn't have a way to reload, he can't play anymore. And, and there he's all in. Oh, boy, I think he knows he's beat now. I don't like you beating me in the pot. Lucky. Oh my god! Cold blooded. That is cold blooded. 200 meters. Where's this music oh. coming from? <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. Yo, where? <laughs> Make it stop. Where's the music coming from? Probably Chin's computer. No, it, that's from the. No. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah, so you heard once the chip stopped, the music stopped. Oh, they added it in? Yeah. Interesting. God damn. Okay. Um, <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> yeah. So that was just a cooler. Uh, I actually think JRB played that hand really well, minus preflop. Preflop's just a fold. Um, but postflop, his sizings were actually pretty good there. Poor JRB. Very it just goes jam. right on his fucking JRB's greatest hits. Well, mm -hmm. look. <laughs> I can relate, man. When you play too many fucking hands pre-flop, this is what happens. You make too many second best hands, too. You get you know? too many greatest hits. Yeah. You, know, 
<laughs> yeah, a lot of greatest hits, man. And it's not like he got counterfeit. Where he could just, you know, check back river. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, just oh, like, it's a creek he comes on the river. He's like, ah. Oh. Yeah, he no, saw the seven all dick out hard. He's like, oh, that's fucking yeah. perfect. Yeah, because Ace Queen's fucking calling. And then he just gets mm -hmm. beat in the pot. Right. I don't, like, <laughs> I don't like you beating me in the pot. It's like, yeah, you don't. No. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> um, overall, pretty enjoyable game yesterday. Uh, so good. It's, it's interesting because uh, I do find myself drawn in. But uh, I think it's mainly just to see what the fuck Keating's going to do next. Yes, and I want to argue with you for a moment. Please. I <laughs> enjoy this more than life itself. <laughs> just know, just promise me. Well, that's I, why hey, we were late for the hey. show today. You were fucking arguing on Twitter. Yeah, but the difference is he can put together a coherent thought. So please, please do All me the I favor. Want, don't worry. It's a fucking three-word uh, three sentence. Yeah. Players' commentary rocks. I think... <laughs> that the table talk from yesterday was what? awesome. <laughs> Did you just say? Players commentary rocks. I think the table talk from yesterday was awesome. Oh. I think having like the okay. table play players commentary rocks. It's good. Okay, but it rocks. I would like, never. Uh, okay, like, I, I wouldn't call it commentary. It rocks like Cleveland. Uh, well, rocks. guess what? I was thinking of three fucking words real quick, and that's what I came up with. Players commentary. Rocks. Table talk is good? I no, mean, that's not three. That's four. Table talk rocks? Like, no, I didn't want that. Okay. Uh, I didn't get there till after. <laughs> okay. Point was, table talk is good. Uh, I yeah. really enjoyed it yesterday. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> Let's not jump the shark here, man. Like, uh, you, weren't, you weren't closing the video and listening to the table talk. Like, I agree with you. The table talk was good. But, like, you know, relative. Like, uh, if it hadn't been there, I would have still been very glued to the game because there were enough elements taking place that I thought were interesting, right? Um, I think your point is valid, though. Like, you're alluding to the fact that, like, having a JRB at the table is just worth a lot. Having um, Keating at the table is worth a lot. They did the most, most of the heavy lifting, right? Like, I mean... There weren't, like, any notable things. If anything, Wesley got more quiet the more he yeah, won. Yeah, I was going to say, Wesley was just kind of quiet yesterday. Right. And, um, then, and then the fill-in guys like JR and um, I can't the, remember the other guy's name. He played the too tight. The guy does plays to no hands and just wins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah imagine, like, imagine saying 2018 Burger yeah, would be in there, but that can't... fucking guy, Dustin. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, man. This guy's sitting here waiting to flop a goddamn set. <laughs> just what everybody, everybody wants to see. That, actually. This is what everybody wants to see, the tight guy who can't get hurt. <laughs> uh, get the fuck out of here. Um, but yeah, like JR, Justin, or Dustin, these guys aren't going to say a peep. And if they do, it's certainly not going to matter yeah, at yeah. all to the, to the dynamic at the table. The, the, the pure dynamic is Keating and JRB knowing each other very well, having played in the private scene, being able to tell some underlying stories and stuff like that. But That's true. Pearson, too. Pearson. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's just more of a, like, fuck you in your face kind of, kind of guy. Like, Yo, know, he's very uh, challenging. In yeah, the way that... he, he's more in the hand talking. Like yes, yes. Right. Which I think, when I hear table talk matters, that's what I think people were alluding to. What Negreanu used to do back in the day, a like lot dur of during the hand. Like, yes, banter? a lot of in the hand banter. A lot I... of like undressing people verbally. Uh, okay, I disagree with that. I don't think that's like what I'm was. Well, I'm sorry. Well, not... I know it's not. I know it's not the case that you're making. Okay, okay. okay. Um. But I think that oftentimes that is the crux of the argument of like why we need table talk so much mm -hmm. is because it can add a layer to uh, like it can add a meta layer to the strategies that are being employed. But largely speaking, I would just argue that that's not the case in really any live stream. Okay. Um, perhaps maybe the slight exception being like the Monday game. And again, it's because they know each other really well. And I would never, ever make a case that, like, you should mute the Monday game or anything along those lines, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no. Uh, this was never even a case against table talk. It was just a case against uh, implying that the worth of a player at the table is their table talk. If Keating never spoke, that would not be the worth of his worth at the table. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, and, and that's kind of, like, what I'm getting at is uh, very rarely is somebody good enough at table talk that that's the sole reason why they're valuable to a lineup maybe but, ronnie but, but maybe like growing lineups like that is it's impossible valuable. possible you put nine nits at the table who are really good at banter you think you're gonna have a good show not you have three nits. three nits no, at the table no, that are good at banter like, it's better no, than than a bunch of nits wait, not i don't anything. i don't think you get 
nits that are the ones that are often bantering too much. Uh, all right, look, I, I, I'll give you a very clear example. I, I love this girl to death, but like, do you want to watch Lynn play? Fuck no. Right. She's great at banter. <laughs> She's great at table talk. Uh, She's super engaging. Right? I mean, but you don't want to watch her play because she's v-pipping single digits. Eh, not single. That's that's unfair. That's, that's but like, she's in the teens. You know, she's playing relatively tight to the vest, and she's trying really hard when she's in hands. And that's not a slight against that style of play or anything along those lines. Yeah. I'm, all right. I'm, I don't think Lynn's the best. Like, um, I can give you a lot of examples. Do you want to watch Mike Matzel play? Do you want to watch Phil Helmuth play? These guys are great at table talk. These are, this isn't the table talk I'm looking for in life. This is my whole point, man. Who are we trying to please? <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I can't even please you specifically as an individual. How am I, uh, how am I ever going to appease a general audience? All right. Whatever. I'll shut the fuck up, then. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> it's like... Well, I, I'm agreeing with you... No, I know, I know, ...that I know. it's an element to add. It's just hard to find. I'm, I'm disagreeing that Impossible. it's an element to uh, prioritize. So I agree it's an element to add. It's an absolute value add to all streams. Mm -hmm. I disagree that it's a priority. <coughs> that, that's all I'm saying. And I'm saying the exact opposite about commentary. I don't think that it's... I, I would never be so reductive to say that commentary is a nice add to a stream. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely a feature, right? It's, it's mandatory. You have to have commentary. And the better it is, the more... Uh, polished and, and the better of a product you're ultimately going to have. That's the whole point that I was trying to make. Yeah, of course. Is that table talk is a feature, or, or sorry, is, is an addition where commentary is a feature. I agree. Action though. players agree are a feature, right? Mm -hmm. Personalities are a good addition. Yeah. Right? That, that, that's the lens through which yeah. we have to see curation of lineups, right? It, it's, it's obviously a balancing act. And you need a lot of give and take from both sides. But I think it's very important that uh, we as the audience start to understand how the priorities lie because I think a lot of time, energy, and uh, vocalization is wasted on arguing over the additions rather than the features. Not paying nearly enough attention to the features that are either got, like the features that they either got right or got wrong, and then paying a ton of attention to the additions that are making us disgruntled in some way, shape, or form. Right, that's that's just my whole take. Um, back to the hustler stream uh, to feature and highlight Wesley one more time. There was a big hand towards the end of the night. I think it ended up being 300k pot, maybe. This is a this is a uber cooler versus Eric. Eric, you good? Good. Person here. Eric with Ace Four of Clubs. What's he gonna bet? Forty seven hundred. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! The turn's an ace. The turn is an ace. So Eric now with trip aces. This is a thousand dollar straddle pot. Fifteen thousand, and Eric just snap calls. And if you're Wesley, boy, you're gonna hopefully go for some huge, huge value at the end. The river here is a five. Man, I'm go I might go I might go eighty five to hundred thousand here. I mean there's a very, very good chance Eric has an ace. He called next to act on the flop and the turn. He's at the hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. I like it. A stack of chalk. Oh, this is not an uber cooler. Now we did see Eric fold a set in like the one of the first hands this pot was limped in a 1k straddle so it's a limped pot in essence That's how it's got so big front door hearts have missed but i mean wesley bet huge on the turn eric called with and wesley bet into two people on the flop and the turn eric has literally the worst ace you can have here Oh. And he's going to get oh. called. There it is. Max value. Oh, deuce is full. Yeah, that's good. Max value. Yeah.
All right. Wesley just flips up the glasses once he gets that two well. <laughs> Pot. Like uh, two pot bad on the river. Rich men don't hide their eyes. When does Eric have, ever have a winning hand on river? Uh, when Wesley shows up with pocket fours, pocket threes, queen ten. I mean, I don't know. Feels like queen jack. Maybe queen jack's too too high up. He ha he Why has. He's never bluffing. Stop it, you guys! You guys are so quick to dismiss like. Wesley's good. Wesley is studying. He knows that. what the bluffs are in that line. For sure. To say he never has a bluff is like absolutely he's, crazy. I don't think he's bluffing against somebody that doesn't really fold. He knows he has an ace. The the real reason why Eric should fold is because he blocks some bluffs. Like if <laughs> I mean, if he's never bluffing, then he's just max exploiting the, the two X. I mean, that's feasible. On the river. Uh, that, that's feasible. You yeah. don't have to have a lot of bluffs. Go ahead, Chen. Right. <laughs> my turn? Yep. Bro, there's no way that casino's winning the river ever, bro. Stop. <laughs> he, Wesley bet 80% on the turn after it goes three ways on the top board pairing, top card pairing, and then just overbets the river. Like, stop, bro. Like, he doesn't have queen 10. Like, he's just not <laughs> barreling the turn three ways when anyone can just have an ace and then just, like, Try to get an ace to fold on the river with a guy that like literally wearing a tank top. Like, stop. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you put it like that, Thank chin. You, chin. Yeah, yeah I mean, that like, makes all right. sense. Thank right, you, fine, chin. You're I right. needed you there. You're, you're right. <laughs> Phone a friend, literally. I mean, you're right. Like, yeah, of course. Uh, oh man, people are so easily. Why don't you guys want to believe the truth? Somebody in the chat goes, Berkey's wrong about West, in my opinion. A month ago, he was losing on HCL. He was down, like, one buy-in. <laughs> this guy, I, I played with him, I played with him, I think, in, like, April. And he was introduced to me as brand new to poker, literally just learned the rules, right? And I'm watching him play, and, like, he's doing minimal things wrong. Yeah. I'm just I remember like, you telling us this. I was like, okay, like, he's not, like, I want him in the game. It's, it's fine. But like he's not what you're saying that he is, yeah. and he's talking to me about Aaron Zhang and like he said he said hi and all this other stuff. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, okay, like you're a smart guy, you're <laughs> fucking sharp, man. Like, like who's who's actually buying this? And then I see the results after like you know him being on the show every fucking day for like three months, and he's down like a buy-in. And I'm like, okay, this is gonna come to an end really quickly. Now he just had the biggest win in hustler history. It's like okay, like he's Andy. Like we have to accept that. People emerge and the, the, the veil gets lifted. You know, you can only run the bit of I'm a crypto genius and don't know what the fuck I'm doing in poker for so long <laughs> until you start well, 2x uh, until you start 2xing river with knows, the fucking underboat where you know you're getting goddamn called by worse. He knows damn well that fucking bit is over. He's been coaching people at the table, telling him everything he thinks about what they fucking do. You ever played, played that it. set? Yo, this <laughs> shit has me dying. I'm like, yo, Wesley, relax, calm down. Yeah. Yeah, when he told Garrett he overplayed that set, that was that was some good gold. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of it, honestly. Yeah. Like a lot of at the end of the hands he's played, he's coached a lot of people. Honestly, recently. I I really do like the way that he's gone about this. Like he had this he had this air of being an amateur about him, of being a crypto. Uh, first of all, for everybody who's new to poker, let me let you on a little <coughs> secret. If someone in their twenties shows up to play the biggest game in the room and they claim to be a crypto entrepreneur. Just know they played poker. They are fucking good <laughs> at poker. Just they, know that. Just they, know it inherently. They were introduced inherently. to crypto from poker, <laughs> or, or vice versa. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, there sure. is literally nobody in the crypto space that gambles for reasonable stakes that doesn't have some level of experience. You're just you're just blowing up uh, Garrett's spot. Why Garrett? Not not Allison, our former academy member. Oh. This is the last academy ever. <laughs> he's, he's, he's protected. He's playing 1 3 in Texas. Nah, I know. It's not the biggest game in the room. I know. There are certain qualifiers. You know, he's the crypto guy who shows up into the game. Yeah, so. but, like, you know, it's, it's not good. 100 200. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like, you know, like the ruse is over. It's just like when the 23 year old kid shows up and says, I'm a trust fund baby. I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's like, shut up. <laughs> Nobody has access to wealth like that at a young age, unless you are able to either be very good and represent that to people who are willing to back you and invest, or you've already acquired the wealth yourself through some talent. Sometimes In you get to ask mom and dad. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you fucking don't. I've never in my entire 20-year career 
run into a human being at the poker table in their 20s where they said, oh, my parents are giga rich and are funding my gambling habit. <laughs> never. That's never happened. I, Fucking I, never. I, I'm, well, I've, I, ran into I a, I've ran into a giga whale who was in his 40s and stealing his trust <laughs> to dust it all off. Mm -hmm. But that's a totally different story. He was supposed to be buying real estate properties. Yep. Right? Like, it's... it's you that muha -ha? Yeah. The <laughs> 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 yeah. There you go. There's a perfect example. Everybody's saying, what about Sean Perry? If you yeah. don't think Sean Perry's fucking sharp, you guys aren't paying any goddamn attention to what's going on yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Let's let's stop with this nonsense. Everybody's trying to run this big facade of like, oh, I don't I've never looked at a solver. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I mean you can't blame him for trying. I, I, I don't blame them. That's I blame us. <laughs> I blame all okay. of us yeah, yeah. for, for, for buying listening. into the narrative. <laughs> It's like why they're, they're they're not gonna they're Sean, good they're not gonna. Just... Sean used to come into Ivy's room and, and don't get me wrong, like he was doing enough things wrong that like his seat was locked anyway. He mm -hmm. was he was giving it away, but not because he was an idiot or didn't know how to play poker, but because he was just a degenerate who had no respect for money in his earliest portion of his career. But he would come into Ivy's room, and he would insult the intelligence of everybody in there <laughs> so badly. There would be like all ins where it'd be like kings or, or like queens versus ace king. And he would just like start spouting off, like, I'll take ace king all day long. And we're just kind of like eye rolling, like letting the bit go for as long as yeah, we can. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, a uh, hundred thousand then. Like, I'll bet you a hundred thousand <laughs> right now that queens win <laughs> because I'm happy to take a 6% edge here, 5% edge here, yes. whatever the fuck it is, right? And like, you know, then he starts walking it back. He's like, you don't think this is a flip? Like, this is straight 50 50, blah, blah. It's like, stop it. Just stop it. These men got very wealthy around you because they're not fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah. Nobody thinks that you don't know the percentages between right. ace, king, and queen. You're taught that literally the day you pick up a deck of cards. <laughs> it's like, stop pretending you somehow got into a 300, 600, 1200 game without knowing what the true equities are in a coin flip. And like, everybody would just pander to him. And he'd like leave the room and be like, what are you guys doing? Like, why? <laughs> You're billionaires. You're billionaires. Why are you why are you suffering through this? And they're just like, do you want him to leave? And I go, no, of course not. I just want him to shut up. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on here? I can't and I mean, you know, in in 10 years of being a part of that world, obviously it's 80% noise and 20% signal. It's so much bullshit you have to cut through. But at least the JRB types are creative with it. You know, like the stories that he tells, the way he curates it. It's a fucking art, man. He could become a world-class player overnight and people wouldn't know for half a decade. That's yeah. so true. Like there were points where it was so abundantly clear to me that he was working on his game hard. He was doing what was necessary to catch up to current trends and no one adjusted. Nobody. That Myself means. included. Go ahead, Chin. <laughs> Go ahead, Chin. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Not not like major adjustments, but like little things that are, are game theory trendy. Like he would check jam uh he would check jam draws on turn when he clearly couldn't call a pot size bet. That type of stuff. Um Whatever, I'm not trying to blow up the guy's spot, man. Just know that, like, what he does is masterful. What Keating is currently doing is masterful, right? Like, don't care what their abilities are inherently. They could be the best in the fucking world. It doesn't matter. Because when they show up to the game, they do everything in their power to facilitate the best gambling environment that you could ever imagine. And that's why 16,000 people are going to show up to watch Keating tonight play on Hustler Live, and battle it out at the biggest stakes. Conversely, it's, it's or not conversely, I, I guess similarly, it's why thousands of people, I don't want to take a guess at it because I don't know. I don't know, man. It might be 1,000, it might be 10,000, I don't know. But thousands of people are going to show up to the Live at the Bike stream tonight to watch Garrett or, or execute his craft masterfully, right? Like, he is a good player in plain sight and we celebrate him for that that's a hard fucking thing to do mm -hmm. and then still be welcome not only welcome but sought out for every single stream right yeah. the only reason he's not on the hustler friday stream is because they don't need him to move the needle 
And, and, you know, a lot of those guys probably don't want to play with him. Like, Keating probably doesn't want him in the game. And at that point, Keating becomes the linchpin to the lineup. Jin? Yo, I have a question. Yeah. So, is it... Do we want, like, as a community, if both these streams just succeed at a high level? Or do we... Do we... Basically, right now, it's like, obviously, Hustlers are like crushing, like, everything, right? But if Live at the Bike or Lodge or, or, or whatever, if they're all, like, consistently pretty high up, would we prefer that? Or would we just prefer, like, one dominant stream that brings in all these, like, famous YouTubers, Mr. Beast, whatever, all these people? Or would we like just, like, a really high bar consistently across? Hulk told us, more is better, man. Well, in this instance, I, I definitely think what more is better because there's only nine seats five days a week, right? Um, it, 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 it's, it's difficult to strike a balance because um, what we really want out of the competition is some variety. And I think that's what we're generally lacking right now. I, yeah. I think that's why we're seeing one singular stream emerge because so many others are trying to follow suit. And the same thing's happening in the vlogger space. Everybody's afraid to be unique and be their own individual and create their own individual brand because of the success that Brad Owen and Nimi have had. They are forcing themselves into the corner of being carbon copies because otherwise the road is long and the end is nowhere in sight. And it might be disastrous, right? Now, shout out to those who are actually out there doing the hard work and, and trying to be a lot more creative. Guys like Greg Goes All In, Marley, they, they tend to buck trends. My boy, Jamin. Jamin, yeah. Jamin, Jamin very much never conformed. Yeah. Um, and that's not a slight against everybody else who is trying to mimic the Brad Owen template. Like, this is how YouTube tends to work, yeah. right? Like, a space gets created by uh, a handful of innovators, and then it gets populated by a lot of co copycats yep. that are still very good at what they do, right? Like they still have to be charismatic. They still have to be good editors. They still have to be able to uh, put in the time and the grind and all that other yeah, stuff. It's just more is better. Sort of. More is not always better uh, because what ultimately ends up happening is the space will die, right? Poker vlogging will die the same way that uh, Jenna Marbles and that like comedic uh, sketch comedy space kind of died or it'll evolve. It'll evolve out of that, right? And maybe maybe blogs or vlogs lean more lifestyle moving forward. Whatever, it, it's it's not the easiest example to point to because um, there aren't a lot of direct parallels to that. But in the streaming space, uh, what will have to happen is either somebody blinks and decides to uh, challenge the norms and the template that's been created, or hustler squashes. Hustler just squashes everybody else. And I think that that's a bad thing for everyone else because what ultimately happens is something similar to what we saw happening as the space was uh, first developing and growing where it's a good thing for Hustler, just like it was a good thing for Live at the Bike whenever they were developing the space to begin with. They always have an endless list, yeah. right? And they'll always have talent to, to pick from. They'll have the, the broadest talent pool to, to choose from. And that is great for Hustler and good for viewers because they're always going to get a well put together show nobody's ever gonna have to scramble right but it's probably bad long term for the space because now there's no incentive to uh to to grow or to innovate right and that's kind of what happened at the bike man right like they they stagnated for a long time they hired ryan Go ahead, Jen. Uh, what's the plan for poker go though because it feels as if they're in this weird conundrum where I don't even know where they fit in right now. Because they're just the top. There's, there's five, there's, there's a stream five days a week that are garnering all these views. And then in terms of edited content, the, the stuff from Triton that I've been watching is actually really good. So, and it's free. So I'm unsure where PokerGo is fitting in right now. Well, yes, the free part is the difficulty, right? Because... PokerGo and Triton are comparable in the sense, uh, the same way that WSOP is comparable, in that they are, I don't want to say seasonal. That might not be the right choice of words. No, that's not exactly, no, but they have... Uh, yeah, because... It's reoccurring content, yeah. but it's not 
it's not daily content. And it's also, you touched on this yesterday, why Poker Go is just the top. They have Nick, uh, uh, Nick and Ollie. Mm-hmm. They, they have, like, they have comedy. They have the production they have, value, yeah, they right? Have Jeff and- not just that. They've curated, they've curated a lot of things in their favor. They have the licenses, so they have uh, WSOP cornered. I'm, I'm pretty confident. Uh, it's, it's a higher end thing, right? So yes. it's just like, you're going to get the WSOP. You're going to yeah. get the best commentators. You're going to get the best production value, the best sets, the, right? You're going to get all that stuff. And that's where the, the $10 a month comes in. Correct. Yeah. I, I think that's true. I think Christian's point, though, is very valid in that Triton is offering something very comparable. The difference is, is that they can't do it as often. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we're a little bit privy to that because uh, Andre is uh, doing some work with them and, and kind of like being a part of their production out there. So we, we know what goes into it, right? And they only have X amount of stops a year where the po- Poker Go is not uh, restricted to the Poker Go tour. They have their own in-house studio. Mm-hmm. So they could do as much or as little live streaming as they want. And I think what they found is that it's not a space that they care to compete in because the whole reason to live stream is as a sort of loss leader to a bigger payoff. For Hustler, uh, as best I can tell currently, their their monetary model is uh, selling merch and uh, advertisements. And that's probably doing pretty well so far. Um, if their channel continues to grow, I imagine that they can keep getting out of the poker space into bigger, bigger advertising, right? For Poker Go, that's not, that's not the way that they monetize. They monetize by vacuuming up licenses and uh, by, by bringing in uh, people to their, to their site. Go ahead, Chin. So uh, what I see that's happening and that's diff- that I would like to point out is there's a little bit of like, uh, like cult like followings being being formed and and like hustler for example with their max pay mondays with their like bluff hats and shit like that like it really is forming this like collective of people that are like brand like they're following that brand and that storyline like and they're building that for like multiple different through multiple different avenues with merch and shit like that and then when you're seeing these like big numbers of views People are like attracted to that because they want to be part of that movement. And I think what would be interesting, and I think, you know, if, if PokerGo was somehow like, if we were able to see how many people are watching this stuff, like, I think we might, you know, have a different view of like, you know, how, how, how they're doing, et cetera, and things like that. But like, so for example, like yesterday, Live at the Bike with 400 people, um, like, you know, like, who wants to view that now? Because it's like, well, we all want to be part of, like, the, of, of the bigger movement, so to speak. So, yeah, I think, what, I think Hustler's doing great because they're starting that, like, cult, like, collective. And I, I wonder if there's, like, you know, another way to do that in, like, uh, on the other streams and stuff. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think No Gamble, No Future's trying to do that. Um, but I think you're right in the sense that there's no loss leader. So since they lost the free podcast, uh, they're just not going to get the same, uh, I guess, like community involvement, right? Like you're not going to have the same level of desire for merch. You're not going to puff your chest proudly and wear your, your uh, NGNF hoodie or T-shirt or hat, right? Like the, the, the bluff hat or whatever it is, uh, it's a meme, right? Like they're leaning into meme culture. And that's spread like wildfire amongst small niche communities like this, similar to like movies like Fight Club or Rounders or whatever. These are cult classics, right? And that's a lot of what Hustler has been able to capitalize on is they've created this cultic like following that can tune in five days a week can pay attention to the storylines. It can all grow out. Uh, Poker Go is a lot more commercialized, uh, a lot more corporate, right? They're trying to create a product that ultimately gets pared down for television uh, they're out there spending you know, $40,000 a show to run a six-hour stream that actually never makes it to air. And instead, it largely just gets um, turned into highlights with you know, expert-level commentary over it. Again, like Brian said, they, they check all the boxes. Um, but you know, they're operating off of that old template of the WSOP, and they're counting on a major network to, to be involved. Uh, I believe No Gamble, No Future um, has a... Uh, a set release date on uh, a major network in the future. Uh, you know, WSOP has been running on CBS Sports, things of that nature. So I don't think that they directly 
parallel to each other. I don't think they're in direct competition with each other, with each other aside from the fact that maybe they share the same player pools uh, that they draw from. Um, but I think that there's a pretty big segment segmentation between uh, Poker Go, Poker Night in America, Triton, WPT, and the daily live streams such as Hustler, Live at the Bike, The Lodge, TCH, uh, and whatever other Texas streams are, are popping up in, in and out, right? Um, I think for the streams, you have to lean into that cult-like following because it's like the podcast, man. Like You're asking people to care every single day. Yeah. And it's just more of the same, right? Like It's, it's just poker. You're just getting to watch more and more and more and more hands, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, you have to curate a lot of that other talent, be it character development, commentators, uh, whatever the case, storylines. You have to be sharp on that kind of stuff in order to not just sustain, but to continue to grow. Whereas Poker doesn't care about any of that stuff. They just need to put out an action-packed show one time and then... You know, do it again in six months, two months, yeah, two yeah months. three months, whatever. whatever. And they have variety too because, like, they'll cover high rollers. They'll cover, um, you know, they'll do like some stuff with Run Good and have an invitational. They'll do some stuff with Storm Storm X and have a sponsored invitational. Uh, yeah. They'll do uh, No Gamble No Future type of cash game. Then they'll do high stakes poker cash game, which are two totally different shows. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have a lot of resources and assets working in their favor that others don't. And then Triton just gets to be Triton, right? It's like four times a year, we're going to run a major high roller series and we're going to run uh, the biggest stakes in the world cash games alongside it. And we're all going to fucking tune in because we only get that when Triton runs. Yeah. True. Yeah. So yeah, live streams. <laughs> we're going to have the South mm. Hawaii mm. live stream? No. I don't think yeah. so. Um, yeah, I don't think so. It's just... The more I talk about it, the more of a daily undertaking it is, and the the weaker the pool is to draw from here. Go ahead, Jen. I just think it reminds me of like Netflix versus like YouTube content creation, okay. where Netflix is like this big uh, production house that like fires off like a billion dollars in producing all their content. Um, people binge watch it and then they're done, and then they have to reproduce the content again. And there's no real like attachment to any specific series on Netflix. Like there's exceptions, of course, mm-hmm. but like you know, you're always trying to like they, they always have to form a new show and, and a new thing, or license whatever they can, um, and then they lose those licenses eventually to like Disney or whatever. Um, and then YouTube content creators are like building this like following with merch and like and and continued bits and things that like people follow along, and that feels like the hustlers model, the hustler casino live model that they're going with of like having this Max Payne Monday with the same characters, like D- DGAF sits seat two every single every single week, whatever. Uh, Friday's like, you know, pretty much Garrett's show at this point um, that gets filled in with a bunch of characters and things like that. But I feel like that's what's happening in that space. And it's very, it just reminds me of the Netflix versus the YouTube uh, kind, of, kind of competition right now. Yeah, I think that that's valid. Um, I don't know that... I don't know that Netflix is dying, though. Like, I, I agree with everything you're saying. And the, the, the real challenge for me, I guess, is that um, even though we say it all the time that TV is dying, it's not dead, right? So it's difficult to assume that the platform that replaced TV is also dead. That, that seems like well, I don't too think big of a it's leap. dead. I just think it, it might be on a, a, a slight decline. And that could be for multiple reasons. But Right. Um, yeah, it's definitely like Netflix is not what it was. You know, well, it's hard to say because everybody was watching Netflix during the pandemic, right? right? So it could it couldn't keep going up, if, like when people start going back to work, right? Because nobody's home all day long to just watch, binge watch Netflix again. So yeah, um, yeah, it's hard to say. Um, somebody said Netflix is dying, and then Andrew Schultz, whoever, whoever that is, yeah. And then somebody says Netflix is plateauing, not dying. That is so true because they just mm-hmm. nev- nobody cancels fucking Netflix. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just right. plateaus. Right. Right. I think that's actually a really good distinction to yeah. make. Like, there's a huge difference between a plateau and a decline. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Nobody's canceling fucking Netflix. That is your a cable. A lot of people canceled Netflix though. Like, a t- they lost a ton of subscribers this quarter. Like, did they really? 
Yeah, I, do you do you think it's because of the model though, or do you think it's because because uh, of the competition that started to crop up? Because what happened was as everybody moved off of TV, all of those premium channels then developed their own app. Mm -hmm. And it's it's also it's the most expensive one, right? So when you do when you have all this competition and you have cheaper options, people move, right? Yeah. Like Netflix is like twenty dollars a month now. Wow. Like where, yeah. where you can get I mean, so is like HBO Max. But the thing is, is that you can get like something like Hulu, right? That will kind of bundle. Right. You get the, the majority. Hulu, Disney, ESPN bundle, and it's less than Netflix. I think it's less than just Netflix itself. Man, I hope you're right because I have it. But I'm uh, pretty sure. I'm pretty. Sh I'm <laughs> yeah. pretty sure the bundle is like fifteen dollars a month or something mm. like that. We have. Go ahead. Nothing. No. None of the bundles attached to it. What do you mean? Like you don't have like we just have Hulu. We so you have, have Hulu, no, I have the bundle. Disney. Oh, you, you have, have the bundle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You guys got like five Hulu accounts. Imagine, there. imagine that I, I, I actually using... have. Imagine that I actually have Disney, ESPN, and Hulu all I... as separate. So you want to laugh? You want to laugh? <laughs> yeah. I think you do. How would you know? Because you got ESPN for the fight for fucking no. no? I, I've had ESPN for okay. It, it longer than I've had Disney. It for wouldn't sure. really matter because it would literally probably only be cut charging, costing you like five to ten dollars more a month. And, but, but, but like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking that house that did, and, the and house the didn't sell the 11, we're, we're in a recession the, the 11 <laughs> accounts on your uh, Verizon I do I, yeah. how did it get to 11 <laughs> yeah. oh did hey, you get bro. a Venmo from, uh, from from old uh, Adam Dolak he, yeah I, I, rem I, I mentioned to him yesterday he's like oh shit I haven't paid Berkey in like five months and I think mm. he said a Venmo so, <laughs> you're welcome see you're welcome <laughs> I would like 10% of that for the finder's fee. Honestly, it'd be worth it. I need, I need someone to fucking manage my giving. I, I can't, honestly, it's, as long as I'm rich, it's fine. But yeah. like, we're in a goddamn recession. You know, it's like, I'm getting older. My earning power is going down year over year. Like can't get a fucking Netflix seat. is fucking declining. Yeah. I, I'm out here trying to compete. Like, Inflation's out of control. The money wow. you do have is deteriorating. $258. He did send There you me. go. Wow. I yeah. would like my twenty dollar, twenty five dollars and eighty cents. Shout cents out to, right to uh, you do enjoy the four hundred dollar <laughs> fucking headphones you got, buddy. <laughs> it's a joke. Uh -huh. Yeah, I do. I do enjoy these. Didn't they even shop. Be... Didn't even shop around for a price, guys. You uh, just look for the one that was delivered today. I I showed you. I said, "Is this what I should get?" You said, "Yes." I clicked, the most I clicked by now. Mm -hmm. I, I I went for. I, I went to the uh, boss for for approval. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking shop around. <laughs> no, no. He's like, he's like, what's that? Yeah, it seems fine. He's like, oh, there's a hundred dollar difference between these two. I'm like, hmm, that seems weird. He goes, this one's used. I'm like, fuck it. Yeah, he said, oh, I said, he's like, go, just get the new one. Should have made you get the used ones. <laughs> it, it, Wait, probably, that's a thing? it probably should have just got the used ones because they probably work exactly the same. I stink like cigarette smokes and alcohol wipes. That is true. <laughs> I want that. You get what you deserve. All right, Chin. When uh, when are you gonna when are you gonna make a break for freedom? I want the nope. guy to walk by right now. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> so bad. He's never coming back. Uh, no. Look at him. Nope. He's done. Look he's... at him. Blink he... twice if you're okay. He's in a fucking tunnel. <laughs> he's got people moving. It was a good show. Today was a good show. <laughs> are you are you gonna join us on Monday when we talk about uh, the ACR kerfuffle? Mm, a little teaser. Mm -hmm. ACR now, man. You're always picking a fight, man. No, I'm not I picking a fight. Today, I don't no. think that Monday's gonna be a fight. He's giving. We're giving informative gonna... information. There will be a little fight, maybe, but not directed at anybody in particular. Yeah, I'll I think it's gonna be a fight over, over over the okay. thing. Yeah, cool. All right, you heard it here first. He says he'll be around. Uh, I actually don't think Melissa or Landa will be back. Shout out to 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 young Poo Dog. She won a 5K satellite into the WBT. <laughs> Um, Good job, Poon Dog. So I think day one is today, tomorrow, and Monday. Uh, unsure of her plans, which day she plans on playing. Hopefully it's going to be either today or There's tomorrow. There's three so day ones? Yeah. Really? Yep. Wow. Legends, baby. Um, She's just going to win it. We're never going to see her again. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Whatever. More power to her. Uh, if, if it's for those reasons, I'm, I'm all for it. But uh, hopefully she plays either today or tomorrow. Oh, no, it won't be today. Oh, today's Friday. I'm, today's Friday. I'm losing my mind. It's Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, so hopefully she plays over the weekend in case she doesn't bag, but, you know, obviously rooting for her to find a bag. Wait, you're going to, you're going to L.A.? I am going to L.A. Uh, tomorrow evening. I'm going to be joining Jeremiah Williams for his bachelor party. I will have the pleasure and honor of uh, hanging out with him, Eric Persons, and uh, young Tice as we 
I think the plan is to play some beach volleyball. I don't know if they know what they're getting themselves into. Mm. I got to tell you, this is a real ragtag crew. Beach volleyball sounds fucking amazing. Yeah, if you're good at beach volleyball. That's... I, I'm not confident that uh, there's a high degree of bumping and setting in this group. Go ahead, Chin. <laughs> Bro, did I ever tell the bachelor the bachelor party story where no. like, the girls the girls ass implant came off or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we'd love to hear. We'd that love story. to close on that one. Go ahead. <laughs> Was it Dr. Mamacita? <laughs> <laughs> Is no, that we'll why you keep, left? We'll keep it for Monday. We'll keep it for Monday after you. Oh, oh nice this, little nerd little teaser. Yeah, that's good. Oh, this yeah. fucking yeah, guy. No, that's man. good. That's this good. fucking guy. All right, we have Chin committed to Monday to tell the the, the, the Dr. Mamacita lost our ass cheek, cheek implant <laughs> at a bachelor party. All right, we're. <laughs> We're going to close on that one. God, get me out of the seat. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us this Wait, week. time out. You're not going to go play the 5K? I'm not going to play You're the 5K. You're fucking there, man. Just, I, no, I, gotta, just play. I have a podcast to run next week. Me and Brian got this shit. No. He's got beach you volleyball. And Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, me and Brian got this shit. You go play the 5K. You and Brian do not have anything. I mean, we're going to fucking burn this motherfucker down. You it's just abundantly go. clear. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, please come back. I have a lot of work to do. Please come back. Please, please don't come back. Don't leave me here with please, him. Please. please, just me and you, Brian. We got this. <laughs> who's going who's gonna to be your interpreter? Brian, uh, we got this. Don't worry. Uh -huh. uh, we're gonna, know, we're gonna talk about. I will promise to be here Monday. Uh, <laughs> not playing the WPT. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us this week. We appreciate you all tuning in. I hope that the conversations have been engaging and fun. Uh, shout out to everybody who likes, comments, and subscribes. If you haven't already, please get in there. Give us a little love. Let us know what uh, you want to talk about in the upcoming days. Uh, do you want more hands? Maybe we'll do more hands. Can't make any promises. On that note, we're gone for the weekend. We'll see you guys Monday morning. Peace. Later.